All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Assemble Plus. My name is Jonathan, and now it is time for the weekly poll. We're starting off with X-Men this week. Now, this has been the first time I've read an X-Men book in, I think, since, like, the old days of Michael Bendis and the Charles of Jean Grey. Like, it's it's been a while since I've read an X-Men book. Now, I kind of have an understanding of where the mutants are at in the world, what's going on. I know about the spoiler from last week with the death and, you know, the trial of Magneto coming up. So, I'm fairly kind of... I won't say ingrained in kind of the situation with the X-Men, but I know kind of where the mutants are at to a degree. So I'm able to kind of hop into this book and get an understanding of everything that's going on. With that being said, X-Men number one was kind of an interesting book, all things considered. It sets up a few different storylines, right? So you have the Calvin Hang and what's going on with him. Then you have Ben Ulrich and what he's writing about with the X-Men. Then you have the X-Men coming back into New York's, right? So it's like three plot points coming in there, right? And I actually really enjoyed kind of the team up and the introduction of the new team. They come in together to form like a Power Rangers Megazord to fight the uh, alien that came down from the big casino where you can bet on like the destruction of Earth or whatever. Like there was a lot of cool things going on within this book. And I really thought they did a good job kind of setting up some plot points, setting up the team, kind of establishing the X-Men back in New York and just kind of giving readers kind of like that first thrust back into the world right number ones are always about kind of like establishing the new norm i guess for whatever you're trying to do right and i think they did a really good job here and i'm really excited to see what happens next right historically i haven't cared about the x-men you know i like cyclops but outside of that it's like i don't really care for mutants this is actually made me want to care about them, right? The different plot points, the different stories, the art was great in this one. Like, there is something here that I feel like is going to kind of tie into, like, the overall arcy narrative of the Marvel Universe, right? Trying to figure out how the mutants resurrect their own. There is going to be, I, I guess there's going to be, like, a tipping point here where, like, the mutants are probably going to overstep their boundaries. And what happens there, right? I can see that happening. So... There's a lot here that I think is really well done. It kind of sets up for a promising future. And because of that, I think this is actually one of the best books I've read this week. So in all honesty, are you someone who cares about the X-Men? Well, if you are, then you 100% should be reading this. Are you historically someone who never really cares about the X-Men? I would still say this is a fairly well done book. It kind of gives you an open introduction to the world of the of the mutants and what's going on. You do have to kind of understand a little bit of what's going on with Krakoa, the resurrections. You kind of do have to have a little bit of prerequisite knowledge. But not a lot there to kind of like, you know, you have to spend like, uh, you know, 40 minutes trying to read like a bunch of stuff just to get, you know, up to date on the wiki page or whatever. Right. So I think it's something that, you know, is going to be something a part of my portfolio moving forward. Right. Add in with the Avengers, Spider-Man, Aliens. Like there is a few good books that I'm reading right now with kind of like Venom kind of, you know, winding down with Spider-Man winding down very soon. Well, I say winding down, but, you know, the Nick Spencer part, I am looking to kind of pick up stories that are going to be good and just kind of like hopefully like you know this is one of them that continues to be good so all in all number one very well done very great and i care about the x-men now who would have thought okay so next let's talk about avengers number 46 and there's a lot here to talk about with regards to the avengers and coming back from the reborn world and now they're back introduced into the 616 and you know now they've been thrown into uh another altercation with the russian guard and it kind of plays on the earlier issue where the gorilla man was kind of set up to turn on the avengers and this is the kind of the payoff for that which was good i like kind of like that long form storytelling, right? Pick up something that I totally forgot about until it happens. And then you're like, oh yeah, like I remember that. So kudos to Jason Aaron for picking up that plot point. I'm not a hundred percent sold on this storyline in general though. Like World War She-Hulk, the Russian guard coming in, breaking into Avengers Mountain. Like it just, I, I get it. You know, obviously, you know, within the world, it makes sense. It just probably isn't a storyline that really speaks to me at this point. The art was good. The story was kind of fine for what it was. I think Jason Aaron in this regard is probably going to be better suited for a story like this than he would be some of his earlier arcs, right? Like I look, you know, back towards the Moon Knight one, for example, kind of setting it up where a lot of the heavy hitters aren't within Avengers Bound makes sense, right? If Thor is there, if Ghost Rider is there, do the Russian guard make it through? Probably not, right? So you got to like figure out ways to kind of get them off the map. It's it's really interesting kind of the story itself and hopefully it kind of continues on and does better, right? We know based off some of the art, you know, that's been kind of touted by Marvel that obviously She-Hulk becomes, you know, more ingrained with the Red Room kind of mindset and the training and, you know, the brainwashing, so to speak. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens there because 
what he's done with She-Hulk over the course of his run is kind of like merge kind of, and I don't want to say merge because people get like Professor Hulk vibes, but it's about controlling the Hulk persona for Jen Jennifer Walters. And it's really interesting to see how that's going to continue. And even though maybe I've kind of not enjoyed a lot of what he's done with She-Hulk, the premise is still interesting to me to see how it is kind of pulled off. But it's all about kind of the payoff for that. Am I super excited for World War She-Hulk? Probably not. You know, it doesn't seem great. Am I excited for more of, of the Russian Winter Guard? Yes. I'm kind of sad about Ursa Major kind of just getting murdered. I am really kind of sad about that one. Um, because I really did like that character in particular. So him just kind of just dying... That kind of sucks, right? Um, Gorilla Man kind of being, you know, double crossed on his own is kind of interesting. Now he's got to live with the guilt that he wanted to die in order to get rid of the curse. Well, now he he's not dead, right? So what happens with him now, right? Obviously, the Avengers are probably going to throw him in jail. But is there like a, like a little bit of like introspection coming? Kind of like, what did I do? You know what I mean? Like, you know, whenever there's like a, a plot and someone kind of like double crosses like their friends or their allies... There's always a moment where they're like, oh, no, like, what did I do? What did I do? And I'm expecting that for Gorilla Man, but I'm not expecting him to kind of, like, redeem himself at any point, right? So, I mean, in all in all, am I excited for the Avengers? Well, I'm excited to get the Avengers back, right? For as good as Heroes Reborn was, I did still miss kind of, like, a mainstay Avengers book, right? Obviously, Heroes Reborn was an Avengers event, so I understand. But I do miss kind of just having, like, a book dedicated to the Avengers and kind of their own you know, kind of stories within their main world and kind of them doing things. So, I mean, I love having an Avengers book. I really hope this arc doesn't go for too long. Um, I really kind of want to see what else Jason Aaron can cook up for the team and see what else they can get up to. It Like, once again, it's probably not for me, but maybe there's like She-Hulk fans out there who look at this and say like, this is the story I want. Overall, I think there's going to be some things that people are going to like about this, things people aren't going to like about this. But we'll have to wait and see. I'm excited that we have an Avengers book. Not necessarily excited for the story that's going to be told. But there is probably going to be some things within the story that is going to be told that I am going to like. If that makes any sense whatsoever. So that's what we got for Avengers this week, guys. All right, guys. Now it's time to talk about Spider-Man. And <sighs> finally, we're out of the chameleon conspiracy. For, for a lot of the stuff that I talked about Spider-Man, the chameleon conspiracy just something I wasn't enjoying. It just dragged on it just it just seemingly just wasn't for me and that's totally cool because now we're finally getting to a story that i actually think i'm going to enjoy the sinister war you're bringing back a bunch of spider-man villains you're kind of putting peter in the position that he's going to fight a lot of them it seems like a pretty good spider-man story so what about number 70 what does number 70 do well it builds the world up it kind of you know sets the stage for everything coming up you know you have carly and harry kind of together right kind of figuring out what happened here with kindred you know norman osborne you have peter kind of like having to figure out what's going on with the sinister sticks you have dr octavius and kindred kind of assembling the team all these different chess pieces are kind of being moved around and this was the final piece to kind of be moved and now it seems like the war is about to begin i actually am very excited for this one not only is it kind of like nick spencer's kind of big finale arc but it just seems like a classic Spider-Man story that I really have been dying for for a while. I really want to see Peter take on this iteration of the Sinister Six. I really want to see all the answers that the Kindred is holding, you know, especially for Dr. Octavius. Like, what is that stuff coming that is, you know, going to happen after this kind of arc is finished, right? I think a lot of the things that happen as a result of the Sinister War will probably impact the next run of Spider-Man in the fall. That is not, you know, that's not confirmed or anything. That's just speculation. But I imagine there's going to be a lot of movers and shakers as a result of the Sinister War. And I really am interested to see how it all kind of shakes out. Now, this whole story could be garbage. It really could. You know, obviously kind of, you know, one issue doesn't tell the full story. But it does seem on its head that this is going to be a very cool story that I am super excited for. Obviously, you know, you got to buy Sinister War number one and then you can buy Spider-Man 71. So there is going to be a little bit of like, you know, more room to kind of tell this story, which I am super excited for. Right. If they were trying to tell this within just the confines of Spider-Man itself. I feel like they'd probably run out of room, you know, similarly, like the chameleon conspiracy. They ran out of room waiting for, to get to the giant size. But now that it's uh, like an event book alongside the ongoing of Amazing Spider-Man, I think there's potential here to tell a really cool story for the Sinister War. So in all honesty, it seems like Nick Spencer is setting up a few cool plot threads, a few cool plot points, and there is going to be something there. One of the more interesting things is now that the Lizard and Kirk Connors are separated, right? They used the machine from earlier in his run, right? At the very start of his run, which separated Spider-Man and Peter. 
now they separated the lizard from Kirk Connors. What does that mean? Like, is he going to be like brutal now? Like, I really want to see what happens with that, right? How do they actually get them put back together? Is that something that's going to happen? Like, I, I feel like, and I say, you know, are they going to put them back or how? Like, obviously it can be done, right? But I wonder now that Kurt's been kind of like freed of this demon, is that something he's going to want to like rejoin at the end of this kind of story? Now, that's an interesting plot point and a, and a question I really hope gets answered, right? For so long, Kirk Connors has kind of battled the lizard, right? Mentally, like, you know, even battled kind of the trauma that the lizard causes. Now that he's free of the lizard, is that something he's going to like openly embrace again? You know, without the need of the inhibitor chip or all this other scientific experimentation on himself? That's interesting to me. I think that's a cool thing to explore, Nick Spencer. You better be exploring that, sir. So in all honesty, there is some cool things happening within this book. It always seems like Spider-Man books can offer something a little cool. It's just you got to hope that like over the course, you know, it comes back up, right? So to me, this was probably one of the better books I've read this week. I, I still think X-Men was probably the best book I read this week. But this is actually like a cool like setup story, like kind of, you know, calling back to like earlier in the run, setting some things up for the future, and then kind of just setting the stage for the Sinister War. This was actually pretty cool. This was a pretty cool issue. So honestly, out of everything I've read this week, it goes X-Men, Spider-Man, then Avengers. And then, you know, obviously, you know, I've been reading some stuff on the shelf there. But for the most part, man, if you're looking for the weekly stuff this week, I only picked up three books and definitely Spider-Man and X-Men should be on that list. Avengers, if you're currently reading Avengers, it might you might as well keep going with it. But, you know, unless you're a big She-Hulk fan and who knows what they're even going to do to She-Hulk in this run. It's really hard for me to recommend Avengers 46. So with that being said, guys, that's it for your weekly poll. A lot of cool stuff this week. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week for some more comics. Stay tuned. Take it easy. Take safe. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.